Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending the Nice Road Sidewalk Project public meeting. I am Tijuana Clifton, Marketing Communications Manager at DISA. We are excited to have you here today to learn more about the Nice Road Sidewalk Project and what you can expect in the future. Here you can see our agenda. We hope you will walk away with the project origin, what has happened so far, and, what you can, and when you can expect to utilize this new addition to your community. A key component to any public meeting is the question and answer segment. We welcome you to ask questions about this project. You may do so by emailing rctownhall at richlandcountysc.gov. You can also go to the county's Facebook and Twitter pages, which is at richlandsc, and leave your comments and questions there. And of course, you can ask questions by telephone. Just call 803-766-5678. And now let's begin our public meeting with your county councilman, Jim Manning. Hello, I'm Jim Manning and I represent Richland County District 8, which is the location of Nice Road and I'm so glad to have you here with us today for our Nice Road Sidewalk Project Community Public Meeting. This is a bit of a sad moment for us. Uh, one of our colleagues, Calvin Chip Jackson, passed away earlier this month. And before we begin, if you'll please join me, I'd like to take a moment of silence in honor of Mr. Calvin Chip Jackson. Thank you very much. So we're very excited in the days of COVID. We have to do things differently. So unfortunately, we're not in a large room and face to face. But we did want to make sure that you were apprised of this very, very important information, as well as hearing from you. So you did see ways through uh, the internet, through social media, old timey telephone, to, you can call in and bring your questions to us, and we really want to ask you to do that. And we'll be reminding you as we go out about that opportunity and presenting that up on the screen. Um, can we change the slide, please? We'll get to Mr. Brown in just a moment. I'm sorry, I thought we had another screen up here. Um, but we'll, we'll get to Mr. Leonardo Brown in just a moment. So we're very excited. We have a great panel here. We have the people who are going to make this sidewalk happen for you. One of the things that I did want to share, just very important, uh, for all of us elected officials, uh, all of us that represent the different districts, my colleagues, and on behalf of Chairman Livingston and Vice Chair Myers, uh, extend you a greeting. And on behalf of all my colleagues, it's so important for us to hear from you. We want to hear from you today in this way. But let us know about what's going on. One of the things that's brought us here today is it was one citizen. One citizen saw a need for their community within the county. And so they made a contact and reached out and presented that need. And so staff took that information and passed it along, vetted it, did due diligence, and the result is what you're going to see today. So your voice matters. One person does matter in Richland County. You may not feel it does somewhere else, but in Richland County, after 11 and a half years of service, I can assure you one person, one voice can make a huge difference within our county. So you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from the others that are going to tell you what you want to know about the project at this point, it's an honor for me to turn this over to the Richland County Administrator, Mr. Leonardo Brown. Mr. Brown? Thank you very much, Councilman Manning. I appreciate the opportunity to make a few remarks that I believe the 
citizens on this meeting will benefit from. First of all, I want to remind everyone that the census is still active. It is not too late to complete the survey. You can do that either by mail, by phone, or online. It's important for residents to complete the census because it helps determine the amount of federal dollars Richland County will receive from the federal government in a variety of areas, such as health care, education, public safety, infrastructure, and jobs. As Mr. Manning said, your voice counts and needs to be heard. For more information on the census, please go to 2020census.gov. Another important area for our citizens to remember is to vote. Voter registration is still going on and is active. And although Richland County government does not oversee the elections process, we provide support to that office to carry out this vital function. I want to remind you of a few important dates related to voting. October the 2nd is the last day for you to be able to register to vote in person. So make sure you keep that in mind. Also, there's been a large response to a request for poll workers. Want to give you a brief update, letting you know that we received over about 2,500 participants registering as poll workers. However, only about 10 percent have actually completed the enrollment process. So please remember, again, your participation is important and we need to hear from you and we need your help. A few more things, Mr. Manning, before I turn it over to the engineer. Other ways that your voice has been heard and action has been taken consist of information that we sent out related to our face mask ordinance, our single use bag ordinance, our land development code rewrite, and our Greenway projects. Again, just reemphasizing how important it is for Richland County to hear from you. And those are a few of the activities where we've gotten citizen input and taken necessary steps based on that input. Again, thank you, Mr. Manning, for the opportunity to make those remarks. And now I'll turn it over to Mr. Stephen Staley. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Administrator Brown. My name is Stephen, a county engineer for Department of Public Works. Just going to give you a brief overview of uh, the Nice Road project. If you don't already know, Nice Road is located behind the Decker Center on Decker Boulevard, kind of right behind the Chick-fil-A area of town. Uh, this new sidewalk is going to extend from the O'Neill Court to Brookfield Road, and it's approximately a half a mile in length. Um, a portion of Nice Road is a county-owned road, and the other portion is owned by the state. <clears throat> this project will connect to the Decker Boulevard sidewalk project that the county's Penny Transportation Department is heading up right now and will provide a safe route for the citizens using Nice Road to get to the Richland Northeast High School. The Penny project schedule is on a similar path as the Nice Road project. Uh, this project was funded by the County Transportation Committee, which was abbreviated as the CTC, and they approved the use of the CTC funds for this project. Construction is estimated to start in January 2021 and be completed in June 2021. Uh, we have a local engineering firm um, that was selected competitively to be the county civil engineering consultant for this project. DISA Inc. we have here, um, and Alan's going to turn it over to them for some more details. Right before we do that, I certainly want to remind and encourage everyone to submit their questions. You can submit them to rctownhall at richlandcountysc.gov. And of course, you can go to the county Facebook and Twitter pages at Richland SC, and you can call as well, 803-766-5678. All right, hi, my name is Alex McCune. I'm with DISA. Um, we are the project engineers for this project. Uh, I'm the project manager and also the engineer record for the project and I'm also joined by my colleague uh, Mr. Antonio Schuler, who is our engineering associate um, and first off I'd like to say uh, on behalf of DISA um, we really like to thank Richland County for the opportunity to serve and to help uh, improve the community. 
Um, with that, I'd like to first turn it over to uh, my colleague, Mr. Antonio Schuler, so he can give some of the key design highlights for this particular sidewalk project. Good afternoon. As previously mentioned, the sidewalk is five foot wide. It has an offset of three foot, which would allow for a, 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 a grass separation between the edge of pavement and the actual start of the new sidewalk and the sidewalk will be half a mile in length. The project starts at O'Neill Court and runs on the northeast sh shoulder of the road until it terminates on Brook at Brookfield Road. This project had one existing drainage issue that we corrected near the Brookfield side of the road. We did some drainage improvements and we maintain the existing pattern, drainage pattern for the road. Uh, this project, we, had, we saw no significant issues and we were really pleased with how well it turned out. That being said, uh, to give you further information on the current status and the scheduling, I'm gonna turn it back over to Alex so he could give you more information. Thank you, Antonio. Um, just to give everyone a, a brief update on the project, um, the plan, the project plans, which I have here with me today, uh, are complete, and we anticipate receiving all remaining permits uh, in September. Um, the next steps would be to address any uh, public concerns and comments, uh, which could lead to some minor uh, tweaks here or there to the design itself, but we anticipate uh, the majority of the design uh, remaining as it is now. Um, Assuming we're able to do that and, and get all our permits next month uh, for the remaining schedule, uh, we anticipate the county to put this project out and advertise it for construction bidding in October. Uh, following the review of, of, of all responsive bids and a selection, we anticipate an award, uh, be, an, this project being awarded to a particular contractor uh, in January of 2021. If all that happens, then we would anticipate construction getting started in January as well, and that construction would be completed by June. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is present some uh, visuals uh, to give everyone a better perspective of how this project will how the sidewalk will look once it's once it's constructed. Uh, this first slide uh, gives an aerial view of the of the uh, extents of the project. Uh, the, the sidewalk is depicted by the white line that's shown on the same side of the street as all the residential uh, buildings, uh, which is helps with uh, walkability. You don't have to cross the street to get on the sidewalk. Um, and as you can see, it starts on O'Neill Court and ends at Brookfield Road. Next slide, please. Uh, next, we want to show you guys a few uh, renderings to give you just just to kind of give you a, an example of what this will potentially look like once it's constructed. Uh, this first view is from Brookfield Road, looking north down Nice Road. Um, this particular driveway uh, is the area that uh, my colleague, Mr. Schuler was referring to where we are making a drainage improvement. Uh, this area has some constant ponding near this driveway, and we are going to add a, a drainage structure that will alleviate that problem. And this also gives you a good idea, a, a good depiction of the uh, grass buffer that will be between the sidewalk itself and the roadway. Next slide, please. Uh, moving further down the street, uh, this is a view from uh, in the area of the Arcadia apartment complex, uh, also looking north. Uh, as you can see, we're, we, don't, we do not plan on impacting the existing uh, fence and gate that is associated with that uh, apartment complex, so that will all re remain intact. We tried to have as, as uh, little impact on, on things like that as possible with this project. Next slide, please. And finally, our last uh, rendering is behind the Angel Gardens neighborhood. 
also looking north. Um, so again, you, this gives you a good idea of the of how the sidewalk will look once it's constructed uh, with the grass buffer, um, a good idea of the width um, and so forth. And, uh, and with that, I'd like to, to turn things back over to Ms. Clifton and we can start the uh, question and answer portion of this public meeting. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. McComb. So now we are ready to begin the question and answer segment. Do we have any questions that have come up so far? Mr. Manning? Thank you. We do. Um, thank you very much for submitting these questions. One that is very important to me, you know, me and Ms. Manning, we're kind of old and, and we like to sleep at night. What time of day will the work be done? That's a very good question. Um, typically, construction on projects like these is conducted during normal business hours, uh, daylight business hours, uh, and it wouldn't go outside of the hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, great. Thank you. And the next question is, who is the citizen so the community can say thank you? So I, I don't believe that's something that we ought to be divulging over all the Internet. However, I will make sure that the person who originally contacted us is aware that you were kind enough to do that for us and make sure that they get thanked on your behalf. Okay, that's great. Do we have other questions? We have the, the Facebook way, we have the internet way, we have the phone number. Is that we okay? We do have another question. Yes. Um, Ms. Jones would like to know will there be crossing guards at Neeson O'Neill and Neeson Brookfield? That would be a question for the school district. And, of course, those folks are elected by you just like your council members are. I know that they have some type of formula working with the sheriff's department to determine, like, the number of uh, students during school times that would be crossing and the need for that. But I will make sure that that gets passed along for an issue to be taken into consideration so that nobody thinks about that after the fact because you have done a wonderful job and that's why we're so excited for folks to join us for meetings like this so that a question like that can get raised and we can have the answer before we need it. So thank you. Uh, there is another question here. Will construction cause traffic problems and will there be lane closures or detours? Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. Um, detours, if any, uh, would be for through traffic only. Uh, so the road would be open to anybody who lives on it and local traffic. Um, access to residents or visitors will not be blocked. Uh, any lane closures would be partial and in the area of the immediate area that work is being performed, uh, such as if there's a concrete pour for a particular section of the sidewalk, they might have to direct traffic around that particular portion but we don't see uh, anything beyond that type of extreme. All right. Thank you. While we're waiting for more questions to come in, we'll do a little bit of public service announcements. Again, just want to remind everybody about masks and also to let you know that we are going to be having a mask giveaway, and in conjunction with the emergency fast, uh, face covering ordinance that the Richland County Council passed, one of the things that we asked as council was, well, once we do this ordinance, are we going to make masks available? So they have been purchased, and we're in the process now of determining the distribution sites. If you're wanting to know where that would be, you can call the ombudsman's office, and y'all write this number down. This is the most important number at Richland County, 803-929. 6,000. You call those people and they take care of you just like they were your mama. Do we have other questions? Yes, I believe we do have another question. What would happen to the driveways within this project area? 
Sure, that's a great question for uh, some of the single family houses that are on the DOT portion of the project. Um, the new concrete sidewalk will, sidewalk will be extended through those driveways uh, and the existing driveways themselves will be repaved to match up to those grades for the new sidewalk so that there's no uh, step down or anything like that. It will be a smooth transition and that would be repaved up to the existing right of way line for the particular properties. Okay, very good. And similar, um, what will happen to the mailbox if it's in the way of the sidewalk? Sure, uh, great question. Uh, all mailboxes that, that are in the path of the sidewalk will be relocated uh, by the contractor to uh, the buffer area between the sidewalk and the roadway for ease of access by the mail delivery services. I had another question come in. It says, who can residents call if they have questions or complaints during construction? You need to call the Richland County Ombudsman's Office. So let me be very, very clear about this. The absolute number one best service that Richland County provides to the citizens is the Ombudsman's Office. That number, again, is 803-929-6000. And you might be saying, well, why don't I just call these people up directly? Well, the problem that you may have may look like it relates to this project, but it really might be something else. It might be something, say, like with the City of Columbia Water people. And these people are not that. They're doing another project. But what the ombudsman's office is able to do is, first of all, ask you some clarifying questions to make sure that they get the information really well and they know some of the different areas that it might be related to. But then what they'll do is they will send out an email and they give it a tracking number. And this is true for everything. You call that ombudsman's office they are very good at finding out for sure because, you know, I, I've been married for almost 40 years, so I know I can't give information real well until Miss Manning helps me with some good clarifying questions. That's what they do at the ombudsman's office. And if it directly relates to these folks, they have their cell phone numbers, and they're going to be getting a call, and they're going to be right on it. At any time, if you're wondering what happened to it, you can call back to the Ombudsman's office at 803-929-6000 and say, I called a while back. By your phone number, by your name, they will be able to track back to your original call, and they will have a whole listing of who they contacted when. They have the responsibility to get the information back to them, so they will have a whole tracking for you and be able to help you if there's still additional follow-through that needs done. So that, that's your point of contact. Okay, I think we have one more question. And that question is, who will be responsible for maintaining the grassy strip between the sidewalk and the road? Hey, great, great question there. Um, as it's currently done, uh, the residences or the the apartment associations are, are currently responsible for maintaining uh, the width of their property up to the road, and that will not change uh, with this sidewalk project. Uh, so they will continue to do that for that strip uh, between the road and the sidewalk. And, and just to be clear, that's for everybody, whether you live along Nice Road or wherever you live, even though there's a government easement, no matter where you live, whether you're in the city, whether you're in the other city, whether you're in a town, a municipality, Blythewood, out in unincorporated Richland County, you're responsible up to the road. And so this is not something new, but um, it, it's a great question. 
And I just want to say how much I really appreciate the design work and, and the county staff's interest in this to make sure that we have that grassy area so that when we're walking on that sidewalk, we have that buffer between us and any vehicles going by. So that, that's just wonderful. So thank you all very much for that. All right, well, we don't have any other questions. Uh, we'll, we'll still give you a few minutes to do that. We're not going to rush out. Um, but did want to share with you um, that the county offices, we get asked, when are we going to reopen? We are continuously, every day, monitoring with the Prisma Health System and with the South Carolina Department of Environmental Control and we're taking our guidance with science and facts with the people that do that in our community. And like I say, on a daily basis, we're in contact with them. And as soon as we get to the level to where it's okay for a building and a service operation like what we do here at the county administration, and obviously we want to get those services open to you as quickly as possible. However, we already did have very good online services and we've even beefed those up in some areas. And if all else fails, what are you going to do? You call the ombudsman at 803-929-6000 and tell them or ask them, you know, how do I take care of this or, or what do I do uh, with regard to that? I believe we've got another question. Yes, sir. What about other roads in the future? So, other roads in the, question, in the future. Uh, there's several, several different answers to that. Uh, first of all, this is a sidewalk improvement project that we're talking about here. Uh, as far as other roads in the future, the um, County Transportation Committee, as Mr. Staley talked about earlier, they have a whole list of roads that are lined up, sidewalk projects that are lined up. There are a number of them through the Transportation Penny that are in place. And then there's just ongoing uh, road improvements that are done by the county, by the state highway department. If there's a specific road or sidewalk issue that you have a concern about, please call 803-929-6000, the ombudsman, and let them know what the road is, what the sidewalk is, what the issue is, and they will get that to the appropriate people who will get back in contact with you and address that specific situation with you. I think we have another question coming in. Don't forget, Labor Day is coming up on Monday, a week from this coming Monday, and your county offices will be closed for Labor Day. Yes, sir, Mr. Manning. And on that note, just want to remind those folks who are concerned about what will happen with trash, trash collection that's collected on that Monday, that's going to be moved to that Tuesday. So trash collection is going to be resuming on Tuesday at all regularly scheduled uh, routes. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. I have a question that came in. I think it was touched on by one of the engineers. But the question was, what is the time frame for construction? Uh, again, we're hoping that, that construction will get started in the month of January of 2021 and that it will be completed by June. So we're looking at, you know, no more than a six month uh, construction time frame there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and everybody within the hearing of my voice. We have COVID. We're in hurricane season. We have a whole lot of things going on right now. So this is the plan. This is what we're looking to do. But your county council members telling you we're going to dance on that sidewalk in July when it's done and everything goes perfect in terms of God, Mother Nature, and all government permits. We're definitely going to be able to walk on that sidewalk for Halloween, probably, and if not, Santa Claus is going to come down that sidewalk for you for Christmas 2021. We have great engineers. We have great staff. 
I'm counting on us dancing on that sidewalk in July, but as your elected official, I just want to warn all of us that sometimes everything doesn't go just exactly right for a variety of reasons. But that's the projected time. I'm guessing we'll hit it, but I just want you to hear from your elected official that sometimes things don't go just exactly right. Mr. Brown, do you have another service announcement for us about the wonderful things that you're leading up down here with wonderful, wonderful county staff? So a couple of things, uh, Mr. Manning, I will just remind those individuals who are participating virtually right now. Uh, our county council committee and council meetings will continue to be shown virtually. So I want to make sure that you continue to uh, watch the county's website and look at our YouTube videos related to those meetings and continue to participate in that fashion. Also, a couple of things that Mr. Manning touched on, I want to remind you that the county is open for business. So if you are a customer of Richland County and you have a need, that the county is open. We are currently not open to people coming into the facility, but we still have all of our major services that are being provided, including our vector control treatment, utilities, solid waste, recycling, roads and drainage, uh, and other departments that you see on a continual basis, such as your law enforcement departments, whether it's the fire service, the sheriff's department, or it could be emergency services. So all of these things, Mr. Manning, are still going on in the county, and so citizens may not be able to come into the facilities as they once were. However, they are still receiving those services. And to the extent that there is something that you have not received, Mr. Manning, what's that number again, sir? If people need to receive services from Richland County or they have questions about services that they need to receive? Sir, that number at the Ombudsman's office is area code 803-929-6000. Fantastic. I would just also remind the citizens and encourage you that look at Richland County's website. Uh, there are several opportunities for information share via the county's website via our social media pages and via our Twitter account. And we continue to encourage you and admonish you to provide input to Richland County because I, as the county administrator, Mr. Manning and his colleagues as county council persons, want to hear how we can provide a better service for all the members of the community in Richland County. So Mr. Manning, on behalf of my staff, uh, again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to provide these services to the citizens and I want to encourage citizens of your district, as well as citizens throughout Richland County, to reach out to Richland County Administration via our website, via the Unsbudsman's office, for any services and any help that we can be uh, of assistance. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. I believe we have another question. Yes, sir. Um, they would like to see a model picture of the stretch in front of the Mission Hope Foundation. Let's see if we can get that up. Yes, that's the the uh, rendering that's currently on uh, on the screen right now. Okay, so this is the view from Brookfield Road, looking north. Correct. Yes. So this so the Mission Hope Foundation uh, sh should be right there on the right. Okay. Now. Y'all are brighter than the rest of us. Uh, looking north, is that looking over down toward Two Notch? Is that looking up toward Northeast High School? That's looking down Nice Road. If you're standing on Brookfield, looking down Nice Road towards O'Neill Court. Okay, so the people with the dog are walking up to Richland Northeast High School to walk on the track. Correct. And if they turned around the other way, they'd be walking down to go shopping on Decker Boulevard. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. There's a follow-up question to that. They would like to know how traffic is going to be handled while school is in session. Um, again, that's a question that we're going to have to direct to uh, the Sheriff's Department because this really, the only thing that's changing is one, we're taking care of some stormwater issues where you had a big puddle out on the road. 
and then we're putting in the sidewalk. So really what's going on now is we're trying to make this uh, a walkable, more walkable, and not having people walking along the side of the road or in the road. But in terms of any of the traffic patterns and that stuff, the road was paved a couple years ago now, and so we really wouldn't anticipate the traffic patterns changing other than we're hoping to see more people walking. We have another follow-up question. Great. Um, it says, also, Mission Hope Foundation has gates and entrances. Will the sidewalk have ramps up to those entrances? Uh, the sidewalk will, will cross over those entrances um, and go through them. Uh, as far as a ramp up to them, I don't believe that will happen. Uh, but again, the the asphalt driveways that I think the, the person is concerned with will be regraded so that they there's a smooth transition from the road to the sidewalk to their gate. Actually, we have two questions. What are we um, what is going to be done about the sidewalk on the state property and will the road be widened or repaired? Well, the road is not going to be widened because this is the the width of of Nice Road and has been you know part of the the highway width and all. Uh, in terms of the sidewalk on the state property, I'm not sure where there's state property there, unless you're talking about the Decker Center, which is county. You, you know yeah if if they're referring to the the stretch that's maintained by uh south carolina d o t as opposed to richland county um we do not have any renderings for that area, but it'll follow the same uh logic where you'll ha it'll be on the same side of the road and uh same offset and it'll run and uh down that same stretch of road just like it does for the rest of nice road thank you. Another follow-up question? Yes. Um, they would like to know, the Mission Hope Foundation would like to know if they will have access to the road so that parents can drop off their students. Access to which road? It does not say. If it's, if it's access to Nice Road, again, we, this project will not uh, block any access uh, to anyone. There might be a temporary uh, blockage uh, if, you're, if it's being constructed in, in that portion, uh, but we will do everything we can to, um, to make sure that everybody has sufficient access to their properties. And so the people actually doing the project, once you're really getting started, um, project manager, probably yourself, Alex, will be communicating with the people that are in charge there so y'all just so they know who you are and you know who they are and and be planning ahead on those things to make it as seamless as possible that's correct yeah yeah we do have a comment um, from miss jones on facebook and her concern seems to be um School may be back in in the spring when this project gets underway, and she is concerned that the students will be walking to and from school, and will there be big trucks or equipment that would be problematic for the children walking back back and forth to school? Okay, I, I definitely understand that concern, having some children myself. Um, all I can say to that end is is that that could be a possibility, um, but the construction workers will have, should have their areas uh, sufficiently uh, barricaded off so that any foot traffic will be directed around them uh, so that they will not uh, come in contact with, with that equipment. Safety certainly will be a major part of all aspects of the project.
All right, well, we're going to let, let me say a little something else because we'll, we can end a couple minutes early, but we advertise from 4 to 5, and if somebody jumps on at, at 4.45 because they got held up, we don't want to be gone quite yet. Uh do want to share with you as the elected official on this panel to make sure that you understand because we've had some primary elections the general election for the county council seats that are up in this cycle. Uh, there are six up in this cycle and five up uh, during the, the gubernatorial race in two years from now and two years ago or five seats. When there's a presidential campaign, there are six seats. We have those staggered. And so in this election cycle, we had the primary back in June and then there will be the general election in November, and then those folks will start, who, who's elected in November, will start serving in January, the 1st of January in 2021, this coming January. So that'll give you an idea about that. Um, and, and we honored uh, Councilman Jackson earlier. There is a special election scheduled for that seat. That election for District 9 is scheduled for Tuesday, September the 8th, and if there's a runoff necessary, uh, that runoff will be two weeks following that Tuesday, September the 8th, and then that final election will be the same time with the general election with all the other ones on November 3rd. And that person, like everybody else elected on November 3rd, will begin their service in January of 2021. Mr. Manning, if I could just piggyback on that conversation, absentee voting for that special election uh, in District 9 begins on August 31st and ends on September 5th. So Monday through Friday, anyone who is voting in that particular special election uh, can vote absentee if they meet those necessary uh, requirements from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, and Saturday, uh, 9 to 1. And then again, related to the general election, absentee voting will begin on September 28th and run through November 2nd. And speaking with voter registration and elections, they also plan on having some satellite locations that they're going to be updating on their web page here coming soon. So just additional information related to uh, voter registration and elections for those citizens or who are, have questions about uh, how they uh, are able to vote and when will uh, those voting uh, begin. Okay. So everybody be very, very, very careful about that. The absentee voting in the end of of. I'm sorry, when did you say for the general, special general, election? For the special election, special election, it's August 31st through September 5th. That's okay, yes, so, sir. so for the end of August and the 1st September, that is only, only, only for citizens who live in Richland County Council District 9. So everybody be very clear. We're not saying absentee voting is going to be opening then just for that one district and only for the council seat. So if you live in that district and you're coming out absentee, don't be thinking you're going to see all the other elections on your ballot. You're going to see one election for that one week in that period of time. And if you're not quite sure about that, who are you going to call? You call the ombudsman and they will let you know for sure that clarification. They may need to direct you to the election commission, but again, they're willing to do whatever they need to do to make sure you get the right answer and not worrying about us having you call a bunch of different people. One call, one stop to get your answers and your situation taken care of. All right, well, we're coming up uh, with just a couple minutes left. I, again, just really want to thank everybody. Um, 
So I'm taking my mask down so you can hear me well, uh, but we are very social distance. We can't even touch each other know how, how hard we try, but we're still very serious about everybody's health. And so um, most everybody's kept the mask up. Everybody, the few staff that are in the room have as well. And we just encourage that because we want everybody to be healthy, well, and safe for themselves, their family, the neighbors, and everybody else. Um, but I just, I really, really want to thank Disa and that staff who set this up. This wouldn't have been possible without them. As you all know, this doesn't just happen. It took a lot of work, a lot of preparation. We had a great slideshow presentation for you for the county staff that helped us with the room and, and broadcasting and those kind of things um, for the county staff that are up here uh, with me. Thank you. Thank you, Disa. And again, I just can't emphasize enough. Your council member, your county staff want to hear from you. We're only here for one reason. We're here for you. But we can't be serving you. We can't be making sure that what's important to you is being heard without you being the voice to it. And one of the things that, that I've learned over the years is this whole notion of see something, say something. You know, when the power goes out, everybody assumes somebody else is calling the power company. Well, when you see something and you're thinking, oh, they know about that, I'm sure somebody's called about that. We would always rather have two and three calls and take care of that for you than to not get a call because you think somebody else has called. So please, we are here for you, and we want you to be happy living, working, and playing in Richland County, South Carolina. And y'all have just been a great panel. The staff that you all aren't seeing, thank you to, to you folks and for everybody that tuned in for the great questions that came along. I want to check one last thing. Do we have any other questions that come in on any of the different ways? Is there anybody on the panel that wants to say one more thing? Is there anybody else in the room that wants to <laughs> say one more thing? Well, again, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in, joining us, and most importantly, for everybody that has played a part in making this a total success today. So thank you, and everybody stay healthy and safe. Over and out.